other people who are so bad, they're not going to recognize what has to be done. They're not going to be mushpa, they're not going to be impacted by, by the bad that happens to them. So they're, they, it's saved until Gehenna later on. In this world, they have a good time. Right? This is an amazing thing. So all that happens to a person in this world, in the Lom Hazer, is always going to be dependent upon where a person is standing with respect to the world to come. That's the standard. That's the, the line that a person has to be judged by. Where are you holding today with respect to the world to come? Forget about, you know, I'm working on it, I'll get there at the age of 80, whatever, if I, if I live that long. But that's what they're asking. The question they're asking, and we're trying to determine what type of din you're going to have in the upcoming year is not like, were you a good boy last year, and therefore we'll give you some more things, some more goodies in the upcoming year. Can I have more money? Can I have more muzzle? More tzlach in business? Whatever, Right? The, the Gemara is saying, what they're, what they're saying over here is they're saying, if this person were to die today, if we were to take this person today on um, Rosh Hashanah to, 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 you know, to Loma Bar, to, to, to a din, a judgment, a bar, would this person be free to go to the world to come? And if it turns out that the person is, is shy, it's possible, he's in the, the framework of those who go to the world to come, but he has rectification to do, they will designate events to occur in his upcoming year. They will not be pleasant. Will not be what he was hoping to get. To rectify. Because that's better for him in the long run. And that's the opposite. A person, you know, comes out of the ten days of repentance and he says, Ah, oh, I really did true, I davened and the whole time I did, did homers, I took on stringencies and I upgraded my Yiddishkeit and I'm more loyal as a Jew now and I, I davened so hard and fasted so well in Yom Kippur, I'm going to shoot, I trip over the threshold and I break my ankle. Right? Or stock market. Things just don't go my way and I look up to heaven and I say, God, what's going on over here? I did, I, I tried so hard and this is how you pay me back? Yeah. Because you did so well. Because you are so close. Because this world's only a corridor to the next world. You want to get it all in. This world's not about having physical pleasure for the sake of physical pleasure. This world is about rectifying yourself as much as possible so you can go to the world to come forever and have incredible eternal bliss with as, as little Gehenna, if any at all, along the way. That's what it's about. They're doing you a favor. I don't recognize that right now. I'm in a body. My body tells me, pleasure, pleasure, pleasure. And the world around me is telling me, pleasure, pleasure, pleasure. Right? So I'm thinking, well, I'm having a rotten time. Look at this guy, this guy. He was talking to you the entire time. He might even, you know, I didn't even dominate the entire time. And he cheats in business and does all those rumors about it, whatever, you know. But he's not Yashar, Yashar. And he's having a great time. <laughs> what kind of din is that? And Shemayim says, that's a fair din. Because this guy, when you're flying, when you're moving up from level to level to get to the world to come for eternal bliss and the real pleasure, because whatever's going on down here is only a fraction of the pleasure you can have later on. While he's like, you know, down the monster, working his way out, which will eventually happen, but not after the Shiva Medur Gehenna, the seven furnaces of Gehenna, you'll be flying. And that's what it's all about. So yeah, that, it, it is fair. If you change your understanding of what's going on, what has to happen? So he says... So therefore, every year at the beginning of the year, on Rosh Hashanah, they look at the person, they look at where the guy's holding to see where he, he stands with respect to the world to come. And after that, Right? So after they decide where the person's holding, with respect to the world to come, they decide what's going to happen to him in the upcoming year in this world, in Elom HaZeh. Because anyhow, as Morris says, and we should, we should be clear, you don't get rewarded in this world for the mitzvahs that you do. The reward for a single mitzvah is way more pleasant in this world and survive the ecstasy in the end. Right? So the mitzvahs are for the world to come. As it says in Gemara Kedushin, Schar mitzvah b'hai amalekah. There's no schar, there's no reward in this world for mitzvah. 
right? The chain, but what is our Gemara's? A young Lassaisa is Gemara Eskelon that today and the Gemara Dabaram. Today in this world in Alam Azeh we do the mitzvahs, but the schar, right? We're being medayik in the lashon, right? The schar for the mitzvahs is not in this world. This world for doing the mitzvahs, but the schar for the mitzvahs in the world to come. The whole but the vasei he nei hurak beches ubitzdaka. Another amazing chiddush that we don't think about. I go to work, I make money. I invest in the stock market, I make money. I make money. I did it. I worked. I did. It's, it's what it's what's coming to me. And maybe because I kept Shabbos. Maybe because I'm doing some good deeds. He says no. The Gemara says no. Bruchas on Yud Zayin on the basis no. Kol Olam Kulo Mizunim Bitzdaka. The entire world survives as a Tadaka. You do not get rewarded, nor you want to be rewarded. In this world, for the mitzvahs you do, it's, it's a rip-off. It's not what you're there. It's not it's worth it. But chlal, save it. And Tzadikim know this. And that's why they can, they can pass the pleasures happily that we can't live without because they know it. This is not where it's at. Whatever we're enjoying, it's a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of a fraction to the, who knows how many power of the pleasure in the world to come. He says, so what about all the good we're having right now? What about the food and the clothing and the, the houses and the cars and all those various different things? Tzedakah. The Shbohu is giving us tzedakah. Just like people beg for money they don't work for. Tzedakah. Shem does the same thing with, with us. Ayin Shem. V'urach l'tzorach kimo olam asos bat Torah mitzvahs. L'chalam abayin. Why is Hashem giving us tzedakah and all those ches and doing these things for us? Because you have to eat. Ein kemechin Torah. If you have no food, you can't do mitzvahs. And since this world is for doing Torah mitzvahs, learning Torah... And performing mitzvahs, the body requires satiation, and, the, and when you're happy, you feel good about things, you give shevach to Hashem, and you learn harder, right? Maybe less mysterious nefesh, but still, that's the way the system works. So therefore, Kosh Baruch has to keep giving us good things, food, and clothing, and all the wonderful things that we live off of on a daily basis. But it's a duck, not because we earned it, that's coming in the world to come. The chen, therefore, nimsha kol chai, so therefore, it's not really shaven in terms of, of, of you know, what you've done in the previous years, but everything that's going, to, that's going to be given to the person, all the person's needs in the upcoming year is decided based upon the value of, where the, of the person's judgment with respect to the world to come. The kach, therefore, danin es adam b'choshana v'shana, so therefore, they judge a person every year, but chila at the beginning, with respect to his life in the world to come. Where is he standing with respect right now to the world to come? And after that, they judge him based upon this, with respect to his life and the issues and the matters of his life in the upcoming year. Shana Tova, Shasibachis Mutova.